On this episode of Andy VGR, we're going to be looking at the long lost forgotten but super great game, Rocket Knight Adventures. So hang on. Adventures. Now, growing up, I never did own this game. A cousin of mine did. And to tell you the truth, I didn't like it then. It was. Hi everybody, it's Andy here, yet again. Uh, no, I'm not a Pacers fan, I just enjoy comfortable clothing, and this shirt is very, very comfortably. Comfortable, it's not comfortably. Anyways, I know it's been a while since I've been doing these videos, but, you know, life gets in the way lots of times. Um, you know, you try dropping 123 pounds, and, uh, and yeah basically. Anyway, so I'm not going to waste any more time with that. We're going to talk about a game today, Rocket Knight Adventures. That's right, Rocket Knight Adventures. Now, growing up, I never did own this game. A cousin of mine did. And to tell you the truth, I didn't like it then. It was seemed way too hard. But playing it now gives me a sense of nostalgia. It's back when games were, were about repetition. It's... It, you know, just like Contra, the more you play it, the better you got. And then you could just go through and play it and impress all your friends. Rocket Knight was uh, like that. Uh, you know, the graphics then, you know, they were... The game has great graphics for the time, I'll say that. But compared to today's stuff, no, it, you know, it's nothing. But that's when gameplay was the key element. The key element was the gameplay, not how good you can make things look. So this game came out in 1993 and developed by Konami. And it's just a lot of fun. So, you know, there's one thing, though, I, I do have to pick a bone about it. The name Adventures, it sounds kind of misleading. Adventures makes it sound like the game's going to be some kind of an RPG or something like that. They should have called it... I don't know, I'm not going to pick it to death. I, I, I like the game now, uh, looking back. So let's go ahead and we'll pop this in the machine. We'll go ahead and we'll take a look. Okay, standard 16-bit gaming start screen. Let's go ahead and get playing. This was super cool at the time. The music and the loading level screen was... It, it's just stuck in my mind forever. It's just that cool. So here's Rocket Knight Level 1, and it's a pretty standard level. It slowly introduces several gameplay mechanics, such as charging the rocket pack and being able to fly in short bursts. Okay, one thing I really just cannot get over with this game is when Sparkster jumps into a tree, he's like he's on ice, you know? And I know, you know, you know certain things can't always be perfect, but everything else in the game is so tight, the gameplay is. It's just perfect, except for when he gets in a tree. Now, I can understand when you're going down, like, a, a, you know, a slope or something. That's fine. But when you're just on level and you, like, go to stop and he just keeps sliding a little bit, it just doesn't feel right compared to the rest of the game. You know, the levels where, like, you're using his rocket pack and stuff and where you're blasting off, it, it's perfect. But for some reason, whenever the dude jumps in a tree, he just goes crazy or whenever he's hanging from anything. It, it's just completely weird. One thing that this game did perfectly well is the escape disaster gameplay. For instance, in stage 1-3, you're going through a castle that is on fire, and you have to get out of the way of the fire that shoots at you. It's just a small part, but it plays so perfectly well. Speaking of interesting levels, there's one where you cannot touch this mirror substance coming up from the bottom of the screen, and for a small part, you cannot even see Sparkster. So you have to rely on the mirror substance that is not only rising and falling, but it is also a reflection that is upside down and challenging your thinking and game playing skills. The flying levels are great. They feel fluid and play just like any other side scrolling shooter. It's rock solid and fun gameplay. Bye-bye. <laughs> 
Now the bosses, while not memorable, are certainly creative and very, very big. Perhaps the most interesting is a giant train with a face on the front. Now when you think you've beaten him, he keeps coming back with yet different forms. There's three in all, and it's very, very good. Okay, so bottom line, if you're looking for a game that is great and has some of the best gameplay that the 16-bit generation can offer, look no further than Rocket Knight Adventures. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this review short a little bit, but fear not, I'll be back next time with Rocket Knight, the sort of sequel that came out for uh, PC, Steam, Xbox, um, PS3 even. Uh, and I'm also going to go through a little bit of a timeline at the beginning of that video because this franchise isn't straightforward. It's kind of weird. You know, in this game you're fighting pigs, the next one you're fighting wolves. It's just kind of awkward. All right, guys, this is Andy saying have a good time and good gaming, everybody.